And it is with European matters that we will begin our business update uh, with Yuka Roya. Thanks for being with us, Yuka. Hello, uh, you're taking us over to Italy, in fact. Uh, the government there bailing out two regional banks. Oh, that's right. It's bailing out two banks in the Venice region. Uh, th this comes the two days after the European Central Bank warned they were about to fail. The government has made 5.2 billion euros of resources immediately available to keep them operating and has set aside 17 billion euros in total for future costs. Solange Mujan has the story. It was a busy weekend for Italy's banking sector. Late Friday, the European Central Bank came out with what is essentially a financial death notice. They announced two Italian banks, Veneto Banca and Banco Popolare di Vicenza, were, quote, failing or about to fail. With the market still closed for the weekend, Italy's government decided to act fast, calling an emergency cabinet meeting Sunday afternoon. Questa crisi this crisis reached a level that required a rescue intervention in order to avoid the risks, obvious to everyone, I believe, of a disorderly failure. To avoid a bank run, plummeting stocks, and to reassure depositors that their money would still be there Monday morning, Italy's cabinet decided to open the state's coffers. We're talking about resources mobilized by the Italian state for this operation up to a maximum of around 17 billion euros. The Italian state will pay around 5.2 billion euros. The state intends and will probably manage to recuperate some of the costs in the medium term. The European Commission approved the move in a statement, and on Twitter, the EU's commissioner in charge of competition policy said depositors will be fully protected. Since acquiring supervising power in 2014, this is just the second time that Brussels has pulled the plug on a Eurozone bank. The first happened earlier this month with Spain's fifth largest bank, Banco Popular. In Italy, as widely anticipated, the bank Intesa San Paolo will take over the failing bank's good assets, while the bad ones are expected to be sold at bargain prices. All right, so a massive bank bailout there in Italy, Yuka. Uh, we're going to turn next to Japan, uh, where there's more financial troubles, this time for an airbag maker. The company's called Takata. That's right. The filing at the Tokyo District Court comes uh, after the company filed for Chapter 11 in the United States. Takata is facing more than 1 trillion yen, or 8 billion euros, in liabilities stemming from an exploding airbag scandal. The faulty airbags were believed to be responsible for at least 17 deaths and caused the biggest safety recall in automobile history. More than 100 million cars from 19 different automakers have been recalled. American firm Key Safety Systems has bought all of Takata's assets apart from the airbags unit. The deal is worth about 1.4 billion euros. The restructured company will keep producing airbag inflators through March 2020 for recalls. Here's what the company, the company's CEO had to say earlier. Once the deal with the KSS is finalised, I think the company will be able to move forward with a restructuring plan. As a maker of safety parts for the automobile industry, our failure to maintain a stable supply would have a major impact across the industry. Now, Takata's shares were suspended on the Tokyo Stock Exchange after the announcement. They will be delisted on the 27th of July. But on the whole, the Nikkei opened the week in the green, as did other major indices in, in the region. Over in Europe, markets just opened a short while ago. They're mostly trading in positive territory. The bailout of Italian banks doesn't seem to have affected bank shares. Shares in food and drinks and healthcare are also among those trading higher this morning. Up next, the Royal Bank of Scotland is cutting 443 jobs in the UK and moving many operations to India. The decision is part of an ongoing cost-cutting drive, but the, the bank's parent company says staff will still be needed in the UK for retail banking. Small business customers are concerned, as it's the team that arranges loans to them that's being moved. All right, uh, so lots of uh, banking news today. Uh, we've also got news from uh, Illinois in the United States about uh, its credit rating. Well, Illinois is facing its credit 
uh, face a credit downgrade. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a possible downgrade, and it will be the first U.S. state uh, that will be downgraded. But uh, let's talk now to the Paris Air Show that we talked about. OK, about happier news. Happier yes, a bit news more festive. Now. A bit more festive. <laughs> <laughs> it seems it was a bit of a success. It was. After some serious business and big deals, the trade show welcomed aviation fans among the general public this weekend. This year's event drew a smaller crowd than the previous edition, but organisers say it proved a good vintage, with orders up 13%, totaling 134 billion euros. Boeing outpaced its rival Airbus, Airbus in the orders race, thanks to its new 373 MAX 10. Passenger jet. What's it called? <laughs> There's a lot of numbers for a name. They're going to total of 571 <laughs> orders for this uh, for this aircraft. They could uh, have given it a snappier name, couldn't they? Uh, Three seven three max ten. It's a mouthful, 10. isn't it? <laughs> come on, okay, Boeing. I'm putting out a, a call to you and Airbus. Come up with snappier names. I mean, they've got Dreamliner, haven't they, for that enormous that's, one? But that's easier to say. Let's okay. start giving them nicer names. Thanks very much, <laughs> Yuka Roya, getting us uh, through to the business news there here on France 24.